What's up, wrestling fans? Welcome to Robert Sports Show. I'm your host, Robert. 2016 SummerSlam preview. Wow. 11 matches on a 4-hour SummerSlam with a 2-hour pre-show. That's 6 hours of wrestling or wrestling talk. If you remember the debacle that was WrestleMania, they tried this. Had the two hour pre show, the four hour show, and the show ran over. At, at a certain point, you just start throwing crap in there. And there are 11 matches, and there's a lot of SmackDown and Raw type matches in this show. You could cut down three or four matches off this show, make it a four hour show and an hour pre show, call it good. But gee, I even mean, a three hour show. Alright, we're going to run down this massive, crappy, just, some of this card is just shit. Some of this card is just unbelievable. Um, starts out with, well, let's step back a little bit. As we know, uh, if you, maybe you don't know, three, three, three people have been suspended for the 30-day wellness program violation. Alberta Leo, his girlfriend Paige, and Eva Marie. So Eva Marie was actually in a match in this show. So that match has been uh, modified. So now we have a SmackDown women's match, two on three handicap match. We have Carmelo, Becky Lynch, and Naomi versus Natalia and Alexa Bliss. Eva Marie was supposed to be on that team, but she's suspended for 30 days so she can't participate. This is, a, this is a SmackDown match. Why do we have it on here? Why don't we end up doing, I don't know, Becky Lynch versus Natalya versus Carmella for the SmackDown Women's title. I'd be fine with that. Oh, wait, we haven't created this title yet, but we will create this title. Um, yeah, I got the faces of Carmella, Becky, and Naomi winning it. Uh, next, we have the Raw brand match. Made by Mick Foley. We have the best of seven series, which they've done this before in WWE. I believe it was Chris Benoit, and I want to say MVP, I think. I don't remember who that I think it was Benoit, at least. But there's been several of these best of seven type series. I think Booker had one at one time. Um, we have Cesaro versus Sheamus, so this is the first one of seven. You would have thought you would have planned this better, so at, at one of your four big pay per views, the best of seven would have been the final Heptide 3-3. This is the seventh and final match. But we have the first match at a pay-per-view. Okay, whatever. Oh, I got I got Cesaro winning the whole thing. Then winning this match. Oh, next, we have the first of six title matches. Titles on the line. We have WWE Tag Titles on the line. We have Champion New Day. Minus Big E. Because he has ring post I believe it's called. Uh, Dr. Gallows and Dr. Uh, Anderson diagnosed it. We have New Day minus Big E versus the club, Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson. In WWE history, there's been two different tag titles. There's been the WWE World Tag Titles, which was active from 1971 through 2010. Um, the three longest title runs for that particular title was 478 Days, Demolition, Axe, and Smash in 1988. Uh, the v Violent Brothers in 1974 had a 370-day title run. Mr. Fuji and Professor Tanaka in 1972 had a 337-day title run. I say this because at SummerSlam, the New Day will be tag team tag have held the tag titles for 364 days. But the WWE tag titles, which is what they hold, began the lineage in 2002. They are the longest reigning WWE tag titles. The world tag titles had two longer reigns. The longest reign until New Day was Paul London and Brian Kendrick in 2007, 331 days. But I either see one of two scenarios happening here. I see either Big E returning, helping New Day win, or I see the club taking the titles for New Day. Now, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson are no strangers to tag team gold themselves. 
Uh, in 2014, they held the IWGP tag titles for 365 days, which kind of leads me to believe they're going to win this, and then on Raw, they're going to come out and cut a promo and say, hey, we held the IWGP tag titles a day longer than you held the world tag titles. Ha ha. Um, Giant Menard and uh, Carl Anderson held the IWGP titles 564 days. So, Carl Anderson is no stranger being tag team champion. So, I have the club winning this match. You know, the club, too sweet. Um, four members of the Bull Club and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, next, we have the, I have the Intercontinental Title Line SmackDown brand match. We have Champion The Miz versus the Apollo Crews. Uh, real big fan of Apollo Crews. I just, I, I don't have any gulp for this match really. Um, the Miz is kind of a crappy champion. They really don't. There's so much prestige behind the Intercontinental Title, and with The Miz held, holding it, it doesn't really have that prestige to me. Um, he's got a 139 day title run, the longest title run since Big E, I'm 167 days back in 2013. I actually have, I love Apollo Crews, he's one of my top five favorites right now. But I have The Miz retaining, I don't see them giving me Apollo Crews currently the Intercontinental title, which I would love if they did. But I'm picking The Miz to win. Next we have the United States title on the line, the Raw brand. Uh, champion the Rusev versus Roman Reigns, which I know. We just seen this on Raw. It, that that the Raw match was for uh, Lana's honor. What? Actually, it wasn't a horrible match. It was just a cluster frick. Roman Reigns getting a victory on Raw, which typically, except for John Cena matches, um, if anybody who when two opponents, Rusev, Raw, and Roman Reigns, fight on Raw. Whomever wins on Raw loses at the pay-per-view. Typically, if you look back at history, it would be this is what happens. Okay, so that leads to believe that Rusev is going to retain the U.S. title. Unfortunately, it's Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is a 2016 version of John Cena. I got Roman Reigns winning the United States title here. Um, this is, in the last, last year at SummerSlam, if we remember correctly, the, uh, US, the United States title changed hands. It was title versus title, John Cena versus Seth Rollins, world title versus U.S. title, and Seth Rollins won the U.S. title at SummerSlam. So you're going to have the other member of S.H.I.E.L.D. win the U.S. title this year. Do we all remember Dean Ambrose held the U.S. title 351 days. Seth Rollins held the U.S. title last year. Now you're giving the U.S. title to Roman Reigns, the other member of the Shield. Duh. I could be wrong. Yeah. But hey. Um, so I got Roman Reigns winning that. Next we have probably the two greatest promo cutting factions currently on Raw. We have Enzo Amore and Big Gaz because you can't teach that versus Jericho 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 Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho Gold. When, the, when Jericho and Owens are Cutting a promo with Enzo Amore. What is better in 2016 than that? Not a whole lot. Um, I don't know where this tag team came from. I will say it's the great one of the greatest Canadian tag teams in the history of wrestling. That includes when Kevin Steen tagged El Generico, when Edge tagged the Christian. When Bret Hart and Owen Hart tagged, the British Bulldogs, the Hart Foundation, I think this tag team, Canadian tag team, is better than those tag teams. Uh, unfortunately, I have 
Enzo Amore and Big Gaz getting a victory because Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho are heel. And heels, there's only one way to describe them in the WWE Universe. S A W F T. Soft? As Kevin Owens said, Big Cash doesn't know how to spell. He's spelling it wrong. Okay, we have five more matches left. We have three titles on the line of these five matches. Um, these really are the five match, five big matches for this show that are really worth watching. We have SmackDown, John Cena versus AJ Styles. A repeat of Battle of Money in the Bank, in which the phenomenal AJ Styles get the victory over John Cena. And a battleground, we had Enzo Amore and Kaz with John Cena versus AJ Styles in the club. We had Enzo Amore, Kaz, and Cena winning that. In house shows, John Cena is 5 and 1 versus AJ Styles. Um, with the victory at Money in the Bank, I see John Cena getting a victory here. So, one on one at pay per views, they're going to be one and one. And then at the uh, first SmackDown pay per view, which I believe is September 11th, it's um, No Mercy, maybe? Um, whatever. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> totally just less. I, I had it on my computer and I totally just forgot what it was going to be. Um, they're bringing back No Mercy and they're bringing back. Um, Backlash. I think Backlash might be the first one. So, September's going to have two pay-per-views, looks like Backlash, and then um, whatever the Raw pay-per-view is going to call. Oh, Clash of Champions. So, I see them having a third match in the series. I got John Cena winning this. I think that'd be a pretty good match. Um, just AJ Styles without the club, so one-on-one. -on -one. Next, I have the WWE World Heavyweight title on the line. Champion Dean Ambrose versus Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Dolph Ziggler is a two-time WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Dean Ambrose has held the title longer after ca cashing in Money in the Bank longer than the last three ca Money in the Bank cash-ins. So if that made sense. So he's held the title longer than the last three people who've cashed the title, cashed the briefcase in. They held it less than what he's held it. So... I'm fine with Ian Ambrose being a champion. I don't know what the rest of the universe thinks. <sighs> Pardon me. Or what you know, WWE actually thinks of it. I think he's doing good as champion. He's kind of this cheesy little facey champion, but they need to turn him heel and let John Moxley come out, and you can get he can give Bray Wyatt some uh, run for his money on promos. But I, I do want to look at. There's 11 big matches here. No Bray Wyatt, no Sami Zayn. <laughs> I mean, you, you cram some crap in there, but you leave two of your bigger stars off. You have to throw Sheamus and Cesaro on this best of seven get to get them on there. No American Alpha. <laughs> it just doesn't make the booking of this thing. It's crazy. Okay, so I got Dean Ambrose retaining the WWE World Title. Next, we have I have the WWE Women's Title on the line with Dana Brooke being banned from ringside. We have champion Sasha Banks versus Charlotte. This this title, this women's title, currently is the technically the third women's title in the history of WWE. They had the women's title, then they had the Divas title, then they unified them, and then they got rid of the Divas title, brought the women's title back. But when they brought the women's title back, they created a new lineage for it. So if you actually look up the WWE Women's title, it only has Charlotte and Sasha. You have to look the Divas title up to go back, and then you have to look the other women's title up to get back to the Fabulous Moolah and all those. Very complicated. But these two Divas, Sasha Banks and Charlotte, can put on a classic of a match. Uh, Sasha and Charlotte, Raw, July 25th, when Sasha took the title from uh, Charlotte, it was a three and three quarter star, star match. NXT live show, March 2015, a four-star match by these two ladies. Sasha, Charlotte, and Becky at WrestleMania this year. Triple threat, four-star match. 
what I'm getting is two of the best women wrestlers in the ring, bar none. They can go out, they can put a show on that can make AJ Styles and John Cena jealous. So hopefully these matches will deliver, that match will deliver. It's not only the Styles Cena, but Sasha and Charlotte. I got Sasha retaining. Submain on this paper, massive card. I have the WWE Universal title on the line. I, I have the, the um, former World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins versus the former NXT Champion, but Seth Rollins is also the former NXT Champion, the Demon Finn Balor. First time ever these two former NXT Champions have ever met. If y'all can find it, something I didn't find, I look back on everything I could find. Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins, Tyler Black matches, Finn Balor, Prince Debit matches, and I could never find a time that Ring of Honor and, and, and New Japan, yeah, they had different cards, but these two guys have never fought one on one. I couldn't find anything. Just seeing that demon entrance, not only on the EXT shows, but at Barclays Center last year for take over one and then on Raw this past week I think the SummerSlam entrance is going to be up off the hook. Oh, excuse me. I think Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, they're going to be able to mesh together and just go out there and put on a clinic of a match. A very, you know, match of the night, match of the year type of match. Kind of like the Cruiserweight Tournament, Cruiserweight Classic Second round matchup of Kota Ibushi and Cedric Alexander, which I thought was a match of the year candidate. This match could be better than that match was. I actually have the demon Finn Balor becoming the first ever WWE Universal Champion. Main event, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Beast and Carnage Brock Lesnar versus. The RKO of Randy Orton. How many suplexes does it take to go to Suplex City? Don't know. But we do know it takes one RKO to go to Viperville. Suplex City versus Viperville. Second time in the history of wrestling that this match has ever happened. March of 2002, one-on-one, -on -one, and Randy Orton. <sighs> Excuse me, I'm tired. Um, Brock Lesnar getting the victory there. Here's my problem with this being a main event match. If you look at Brock Lesnar in the past five years, seven matches. This is his eighth match. Last year he had eight matches. 2014 he had four matches. 2013, three matches. 2012, two matches. This guy's supposed to be the beast in carnage. The unbeatable Brock Lesnar. Feeling some few more shows here, dude. I mean, we, we all know what's going to happen. Suplex, suplex, suplex. F5. Sweating like a bucket of sweat. Um, looks like going to have a heart attack. F5. Suplex, suplex. F5. RKO. Done. Randy Orton wins. I think with Lesnar coming off his two, 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 failed jerk tests for UFC. Um, and not being suspended by WWE because WWE doesn't test their part-time wrestlers. And that kind of convenient. Seeing Roman Reigns, Alberto Del Rio, Paige, even Marie all getting suspended for 30 days. Here you got a guy who's got two failed drug tests and doesn't get nothing. He ain't wanting this. RKO for the victory. The Viper, Randy Orton. So that will wrap up the 2016 SummerSlam review. As always, check out the uh, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn preview. Check out the uh, Cruiserweight Top 10 for, uh, first round matchups also on Robert Sports Show. And stay tuned to Robert Sports Show for a second round Cruiserweight Top 10. Uh, top if the eight matches in the second round, I'll just rank the eight matches. Then I'll have a review of TakeOver. I'll have a review of SummerSlam. So that will wrap up Robert's Sports Show. 
Don't just have a great night. Have, have an American night.